Hello, everyone. Welcome to our NC training course. I'm Jenny from Nova Star. Our training is starting soon, and the topic is a 4K solution. To provide you a good training environment, we sincerely suggest you to keep your audio on mute mode during the whole session. Please scan a QR code or click the link at chat room to sign in. If you cannot click the link, please copy and paste it to your browser. Feel free to leave your questions that are related to today's topic on the chat room. We will reply you later on the Q&A session. If you have any other questions that are not about today's content, please feel free to send an email to nce at novastar.tech. Now, let's welcome Darren, he is today's trainer. I'm Darren. Uh, welcome to our NC training. So you can call me Darren or you can call me Darren Wong because Wong is my family name. Or you can call me tonight. <laughs> Sorry, no kidding. <laughs> okay, uh, first I'd like to start with the introduction of NCE training to the guys who are not much familiar. The full name of NCE is Novastar Certified Engineer. And we have trained more than 3,000 individuals all over the world since it started in 2014 but give multiple courses and valuable chances to embrace the LED control system. And NCE courses enable you to operate and maintain equipment independently. Because of the new coronavirus, and this year we hold the training online. And this series, uh, we, we're hoping more techniques could get knowledge and the certification even in this, in this hard time. And this series NCE, uh, we will have eight courses and a final examination. You could get online training certification if you're signing for six courses at least and pass the final exam. So at last, I hope all you guys can go to all the courses to make a good score. And as you can see from this schedule, uh, this is our fourth, uh, fifth course. So it's time to have a short review about the last four courses. So the first course is the basic knowledge of Nova Control System, which Jenny shares some information about uh, the basic structure of the LED control system and how we calculate loading capacities of the output ports. And later, Arno showed us how to use Nova LCT to perform the basic screen configuration of our LED screen. And after that, we can make sure our screen can show the correct image. And Stan showed us how to set redundancy settings for our system. It's about three ways for redund set redundancy within one unit and set redundancy with multiple units, the cascading way and the non-cascading way. And the fourth, uh, Lay showed us the application scenarios. We may have some uh, multiple screens in one project. So if you want to adjust the screen brightness, or realize monitoring all the screen status in one interface, we need to use a multi-screen management function. And today, the topic is about the 4K solution. So I will share, share some information about the 4K solution design. And, and you can see for the last three courses, it's all about the troubleshooting. Okay, now let's dive into today's topic, 4K solution design. So, as we know, the pixel pitch is going down all the way from 3.9, 2.6, 1.5, 1 1.2, and even 0 0.8, or even smaller. As you can see from this picture, the same size screen, now we have more pixels, so which means the screen resolution become much bigger and bigger. And the reason is because the pixel pitch has become smaller and smaller. And the 4K screen seems more common in our daily life, daily project. And from this picture, on the top left, there is a yellow mark which should you 4K, 3840 by 2160. 
I think you may have some doubts about the 4K resolution. Actually, there are some discrepancies when people definite the 4K resolution. If we talk about the real 4K, the resolution should be 1496 by 2160. But in life, the Ultra HD resolution, 3840 by 2160, seems more common, and it's also very close to the 4K resolution. So people usually use this resolution to represent 4K as well. And today, in my uh, demonstration, my presentation, I will also use the 3840 by 2160 to demonstrate the 4K solution. Okay, now let's talk about it. Before we talk about the 4K solution design, I think we should, uh, we, we should know some information before, before we start a project design. So what is the necessary information if we start to make a project design for the customers? I think normally for my, from my point of view or from my experience, there will be three necessary informations. The first one, what is the total resolution of your whole screen? So here, regarding the resolution, we are not talk about your screen dimension because sometimes when we're doing the technical support, the customer will uh, tell us, okay, my screen is uh, how many meters high and how many meters, uh, meters, meters wide. So actually what we want is how, uh, what is a pixel in width and what is pixel in height. Then we can get the total resolution of the screen. So the total resolution, why is that important? We can, from this information, we will know how many output ports or, or how many uh, sending card we may use for this project. I may have some ideas about the sending card type, but I'm not very sure because I also need the second information to help me to confirm which sending card to use, which is what is a video source the customer will use. Because for different sending card or different controllers, we have a different video source input. So this will help us to give the correct answer to the customers. For example, if the customer told you, okay, uh, in, my, in my project, I will have a, a camera, so I need the SDI input, then I will not recommend the M-Control 660 to the customers. I may uh, recommend the VX4S because the VX4S have the SDI input. So here's an example. And the third one is about uh, additional requirement because except the total resolution and the video source information, the customer may also have some other requirements like uh, the low latency, uh, long distance transmission, or auto brightness adjustment. So with all these inf information, we can provide the customer the perfect project design. Okay, now let's see what options to make a 4K resolution project which device to use, and what is the system structures. So here, I divide the sending card or the controllers into three categories, the 1080p level, and the 4K 1K level, and the 4K 2K level. So with all these devices, we can realize to uh, finish a 4K project, but the system structure will be different. So now let's see them one by one, how we realize a 4K project with different sending cards. The first one, we use a 1080p to splice the 4K. And here in this structure, the sending card I'm using is the M control 660. And in this structure, there will be three channels. The orange one represents the control channel. And the, yellow, uh, and the green one represents the video channel. And the blue one represents the output channel. And let's see them one by one. The first, we need to use a USB cable, connect to the control PC to the first sending card. And the control PC also provide a video source to a 4K splicer. And don't forget the control PC here is have some requirement because uh, it, should, uh, it should capable to output the 4K resolution uh, video, video source to the 4K video splicer. And the video splicer will split the video source into four parts and provide this uh, video source to each of the sending card. And for the loading part for, the, for each sending card, as you can see here, this one load 
the top right of the screen. And this one loads the top left of the screen. And this one, bottom, uh, bottom left. And this one, bottom right. So as you can see, totally, we divide the 4K screen into four parts, a two by two, uh, two by two area. And in this structure, now we have a 4K uh, control PC, and we have a 4K video splicer, and we have four PCs sending card, which is M control 660. And if we consider about uh, redundancy, if we want to set the system back up, then we need to double the sending card amount. So we need eight pieces, I'm um, control 660. So now next, let's see how we uh, finish the software part. So at the fourth, uh, fourth course, Lay told us if we have multiple screens, we need to create more than one screen. So in the screen connection interface, the quantity of the screen here, we should select four. Because now we use four uh, M control 660 to load four part of the screen. So we need to create four screens in the software. So the quantity of the screen is four. Now you, in this uh, interface, you have four tabs, screen one, screen two, screen three, screen four. And we use the sending card one with four output parts to load the screen area, uh, a quarter of the screen which you can think is uh, the top, top right of the 4K screen. And the sending card two is a screen two, and we load the top left. Sending card three with four output ports, we load the bottom, bottom left area. And the sending card four, we, use, uh, 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 we, we load the screen four, which is a uh, bottom right area. So totally, we use four pieces, um, control 660 to load full parts of the screen. And please note here, with the coordinates, the all remains zero, zero. Because why we are not create one big screen? One, uh, one big screen and we connect uh, the screen connection, we finish the screen connection with all, all the full pieces and control 660. The reason is, for the software, the screen connection part, the topology will influence the image uh, image mosaic it will influence the, the the video source coordinates if we if we finish the the screen connections but actually in this structure what we have is a video splicer and a four pieces sending card so the image mosaic we finished by the 4k video splicer is not finished by the sending card so here every sending card we should remain the coordinates zero zero because the video splicer will tell the sending card, okay, what is the video source for you and which part of the video source you should display. And what if we use an all-in-one controller? Can we simplify the system structures? The answer is yes. And let's see the system structures. So this is the system structure. If we use an all-in-one controller, here uh, is a VX4S. And uh, it's the same principle if we use the Nova Pro HD. They, all, uh, they, uh, they are all the all-in-one controller. So why we call it all-in-one? The reason is uh, it's not just a sending card. It's also a video processor. So let's see how the, uh, the, sy the system goes. The first, we use a control PC to connect uh, the first sending card via the USB cable. But here, you may notice the control PC we are not to use a 4K one. We can just use a normal one, which can output the 1080p level video source. And between the sending card, the VX4S, we also use a USB cable to finish the cascading because they are splice a big screen. So we need to control all the device at the same time for the brightness adjustment. And for the video source part, and we need to use a DVI source input because as you can see, between every VXOS, we use DVI loop. So the video source should be the DVI. And we can loop the signal from the first one to the second one, to the third one, and the fourth one. And for loading this 4K screen, we also divide this screen into, uh, into a two by two area. 
So this VX OS will load the uh, top right of the screen. And this one, top left, bottom left, and the bottom right. So for load the screen, is the same principles when we perform it in uh, uh, M Control 660. And let's see the software settings. It's same principles. We create a full uh, full screens. So you have full screen tabs in the screen connection interface: screen one, screen two, screen three, and screen four. So if you check the screen connection, it's basically the, exactly the same when you perform the uh, system structure uh, when you perform the screen connection with the Amcontrol 660. But you may wondering, in the previous structures with Amcontrol 660, we are not set the uh, image offset. The reason is we have a video splicer which can do this job. But now we, we do not have a, uh, a full key video splicer in, in the front. But why we do not set the image, image coordinates? Don't forget the VX4S is an all-in-one controller. It's a sending card and it's also a video, video, uh, video processors. So it can also do the video processing functions because the VX4S or the ProHD, we have a function named the image mosaic, image mosaic. So the image mosaic will help you to splice several sending card and to splice a big, to realize, to load a big screen. So after we finish the software part, it's not finished because we also need to do some settings in the front panel. And next, let's see the hardware settings. So this is the front panel of the VX4S because we need to use the knob button and the LCD menu to change some parameters and then finish the image mosaic. Let's see this short video clip together. So get into the menu, select image mosaic. As you can see here, for the image mosaic, we have two options. It can let you to do the eco image mosaic or unequal Im image uh, mosaic. So for this example, we divide the screen in four parts. It's two by two area and it's eco. Every sending card we load a 1080p area. So here we need to select uh, the eco, but sometimes maybe you have two uh, VXOS to do the splice. Um, maybe it's not eco. For example, one sending card load a much bigger area and the other one load a small area. So here it doesn't matter. We just input the total width of the pixel to the head, uh, to the head pixel of the big screen. So the total pixel here is about this, uh, the screen which you will, uh, you will splice for. So for example, for this, uh, for this case, the, the big screen is a 4K screen. So the total weight should be 3840 by 2160. And when the sending card is on eco, we should also input the load area weight and load area head. But here for this case, we no need to do it because it's been divided into four equally uh, into four equally parts. So let's continue. So we need to select eco. As you can see on the front panel, the menu has been changed. The mosaic row quantity shows here. So we input the total waist pixel 3840 and the total head pixel 2160 to let this, the controller know, okay, the, the focus screen is a is the aim is a target we need to splice, and we should tell the software uh, we should tell the the controller okay how many rows and how many uh, columns uh, the the, the spl spl splice we, we use. Sorry. So input the total width and the total head. And for, for our examples, the mosaic row quantity is two. It's a two by two area. And the mosaic column quantity is also two. So there will be 
four load area position, one, two, three, and four. And we should do it four times for every VXOS to let the, uh, the syndicator know, okay, you have four brothers and you should splice this 4K screen together. And there is some logic when we do the image mosaic. For example, if this is our screen, and we divide it into four parts, and the image mosaic, it's, uh, this part is about the loading area position when we set the image mosaic. This will be the one, two, three, and four. So you should be careful when you set the image mosaic in the front panel of each VX4S. So the top left one, when you set the loading area position, it should be uh, number one. And the top right one, the loading area position should be number two, and same principles. And if we have some other uh, screen shape or screen structure, it's the uh, same principles. So the number logic is from the left to right. And if we have more rows, it will start to the next, uh, it will continue to the next row. One, two, three, four. Maybe we have five, six, seven, eight. So this is a system logic. When we set the image mosaic and when we uh, give the sending card the load error position. Okay, now let's continue. So let's have a short review about the steps for configure the image mosaic. The first, for the control channel, we use a USB cable to connect the, the control PC to the first sending card, and we cascade all the VX4S via the USB cable. And for the video source, it comes from the control PC, the DVI signal, and we use the DVI loop to the second one, to the third one, and to the fourth one. And we need to go to the software to configure the screen connection of each VXOS. And the each VXOS is a separate screen, which means we need to create four screens in the screen connection interface. After that, we need to go to the hardware settings. So for, to the first VXOS, we choose the image mosaic, and we choose eco, and we input the total waist pixel is 3840, and the total head pixel is 2160. And for the image mosaic quantities is two, and the image column, uh, mosaic column quantity is two, is a two by two area. And the loading area position, one, two, three, four. So the logic is from the top left to top right, then go to the bottom left, bottom right, one, two, three, four. So we need to do it four times for every VX4S. So this is a system structure, and this is a software and hardware settings if we use a VX4S to splice a 4K. And you may be wondering what is advantages and disadvantages if we compare it with the previous structure. We use a 4K splicer, and we use a four pieces M control 660. Okay, for the advantages part, if we use a VX4S, the first, we are not required for a 4K video splicer. And for the control PC, we are not required. Uh, the control PC, it's a 4K one. So which means we can save some cost, save co some cost. But the disadvantage is also obvious. The first, we cannot realize the pixel to pixel display. The previous structure, the 4K PC provided 4K video source to the 4K video splicer and it can provide four separate video, uh, video signals to each sending card. And we can realize the pixel to pixel of the 4K screens. And we can, uh, I think you can understand for the image qualities, the best way is a pixel by pixel. So this is a disadvantages if we use a VX4S. And for some, uh, for some application scenarios, the people all the customers may have some requirement to switch the video source and open multiple layers. But for the VX4S here, 
if we use diva loop to be the, the signal for the rest uh, VX4S, the video source input can only be the, can only be the DVI. So which means we cannot to do the, the signal switch, signal switch. And if we want to open layers, the VX4S only support picture in picture and the picture in picture can only be opened within the loading area of that VX4S. But if we use a 4K video splicer and the full PCS M control 660, we can support to open multiple layers and these layers can cross different video, uh, VX4S, uh, different M control 660 loading area. And with a video, uh, 4K video splicer, we can support to switch different video source input. So that is the advantages. So if you have a 4K project, and if you want to use a 1080p level sending card controllers to realize it, and we recommend you the first way with a video splicer and four pieces sending card. I think if we talk about the redundancy, all our sending card need to uh, be, be, be the double amount. So maybe for our control room, it would be like this. I don't know what is your feeling. Every time when I saw this, it made me a headache. So can we, uh, is it possible to simplify the system structures? The answer is yes. So we need to consider, okay, can we reduce the sending controller's number? Then we need to, uh, then we need to find a controller which have more output ports, have more, much loading capacities to load the screens. Then we are talking about the 4K 1K to splice the 4K screens. So with the 4K 1K, currently for Novastar, we have the controller M control R5, which have all the 4K 1K level video source input, and it have eight output ports uh, can load the 4K 1K resolution screens. And let's see the data flow. The first, the same principles, we use the USB cable connect to the control PC to the first M control R5. And the control PC also provide a video source to the video splicer. The video splicer will split this video source and provide separately video source to the first M control R5 and the second one. With the uh, M control R5, we have three, uh, three kind of video source inputs the dual link DVI, the DP and HDMI. The DP is 1.4, uh, uh, sorry, is 1.1 and the HDMI is 1.4. And if we load the screen, the first M control R5 will load top of the screen. It's uh, 3840 by uh, 1080. Sorry for the red part, uh, th this is not 3840, it's 2160. For the bottom one, we use uh, the second M control R5 to load the bottom area of the screen. And let's see how the software settings. In same principles, we go to the screen connection interface and the quantity of the screen, we no need to create four, we just need to create two. And with the first uh, M control R5, we finish the screen connection of the top of the, the focus screen. And for the bottom part, we use the second M control R5, which is the screen two. And with the image coordinates, we still remain it like zero, zero, because the 4K video splicer will help you to do the image mosaic. And you may wondering, uh, I remember Novastar have the, the 4K sending card. Why do we just use one, one device to finish this project? Of course, we can use the 4K, uh, we can use a 4K to realize this project. So the system will be simplified like this. The control PC to the video uh, precisor, then go to the 4K sending card, then go to directly load the 4K screens. And you may wondering, or you have some doubts, why you still add a video uh, process here? Because the 4K, I'm control 4K can accept the 4K video source input. The reason is, for some application scenarios, the customer, they may want to open multiple layers or they want to switch the video source, then we need to use a video processor to do this, to do this. 
So we use the USB cable, connect the Amcontrol 4K with the control PC. And the video source comes from the control PC to the video processor, then goes to the Amcontrol 4K. Then we can open, uh, we can enable layers from the video processor part. And for load the, the screen, we use just one piece of Amcontrol 4K with 16 output ports to realize this 3840 by 2160 resolution screen. And you may be wondering, for the 1080p level, we have the sending card uh, choice, Amcontrol 660 or Amcontrol 600. But with the 4K level, do we also have the all-in-one choice? And of course, we have, actually we have another device, name is Nova Pro UHD Junior. So we can also use one piece Nova Pro UHD Junior to finish the 4K project design. As you can see, currently now, we do not use a 4K video processor anymore because the Nova Pro UHD Junior is just like an AMP control 4K and a video processor combined together. So the system structure will be, be like the USB cable to the Pro UHD Junior and the video source fit to the Pro UHD Junior as well. And we use the UHD Junior 16 output ports to load the screen. And if you're uh, wondering about layers, of course, so for the Nova Pro UHD Junior, we also support open three layers and one background on the screens. So it's for, for the common 4K project is, is enough. And let's see the software settings. So this time, we no need to consider about multiple screens because we use only one device to finish all the screen connections. So here, the sending card number is only one and we no need to create four screens, only one. And we use all the 16 output ports to finish the screen connection. So this part is uh, not much to talk about. Okay, now let's have a, a review about the controllers we use today. The first, we use the 1080p level to splice the 4K. We use Amcontrol 660 and a VX4S. So even the Amcontrol 660 is being released in the market for a long time, but it's still popular. I think the reason is because the front panel, because we have the front panel and a knob button, we can realize the quick configuration with the front panel. And they support 2.3 million pixels, and the video source is HDMI and single link DVI. For the VX4S, it's the only one controller combined the sending card function and the video processing function like the auto scale and the picture in picture. With the 4K 1K level, we use the uh, Amcontrol R5. And you can see here, all the video source input is support 4K 1K resolution. The HDMI is 1.4 version, and the DP is 1.1, and we have one Julik DVI, also support 4K 1K. And it supports free rotation. If you uh, use the receiving card A8S or A10S Plus together with our Amcontrol R5, you can realize the image rotation any angle of your screen. And it also has the fiber output ports, which can meet the long distance transmission application scenario. Okay, then we just use one device, Amcontrol 4K, to load the 4K screen. And besides, the video source input is all the 4K 2K level. The Amcontrol 4K support 8.8 .8 million pixels and also support like the, the 3D, HDR, and low latency. And also, it has full fiber output ports which we have another accessories named the CVD 4K. You can use this two device together to finish the long distance transmission. And the last one, we talk about the 4K only one, which is a Nova Pro UH Junior. And except the HDMI video source input, uh, the DVI will also support two different modes, the single link mode and dual link mode. And we also have the 12G SDI in and loop. And Besides the 3D HDR low latency, the Nova Pro UHD Junior support open three layers and one background. And if you talk about the loading capacities, the Amcontrol 4K and Nova Pro UHD Junior, we all have 16 outputs, uh, output ports, but the Nova Pro UHD Junior can support 10.4 million, million pixels. The reason is for the Amcontrol 4K, it's just a sending card no image processing functions, no scanning. So it's been limited by the video source input 
1496 by 2160. So if you multiply these two numbers, you would get the total resolution will be around 8.8 .8 million pixels. But for the Nova Pro Ute Junior, we can make full of use the output ports. So each output port is 650,000 pixels, and we can use 16 times this number, this value, because the Nova Pro Ute Junior is also video, uh, video processor, so we can scale the video source input to the full screen to make our screen shows uh, every pixel shows the image. And also it supports the fiber output ports. Okay, this is a five kind of controllers we talk about in the 4K solutions. And the last, let's have a review about today's topic. So regarding the 4K solutions, if we use the 1080p uh, level to finish the, 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 the splice, we have two choice, the independent controller or the all one controller. With the independent controller, we have the Amcontrol 660 or 600 or even 500, etc. Then we need a 4K uh, output port, of a 4K capable control PC and a 4K video splicer. And we need four pieces Amcontrol 660 to finish this pro uh, project. And if we use the only one controller, like the VX4S or Pro HD, we can use the DVI as a video source input and we can use a DVI loop to, to splice uh, the image, image uh, to splice the 4K screen. But the disadvantage is it cannot do the pixel by pixel display. So because we, the video source input is 1080p level, we will scale the 1080p to 4K. As you can imagine, the image quality may not, may not that good. And when we talk about the 4K 1K level to splice the 4K, we have the independent controller, M control R5. We also need a 4K capable control PC, and we need a 4K video splicer, and we need two PCs, M control R5, to load the top, uh, top of the screen or the bottom of the screen. And last one, regarding the 4K 2K level, we, have, we also have two options the M control 4K and the all-in-one Nova Pro UHD Junior. So with M control 4K, if, we, if the customer just want one picture or, or one content on the screen, okay, that's enough. If the customer want more layers or want to show different content on the screens, we may need the video precisors to, to do the source switch or to open layers on the screen. And if we use the Nova Pro UHD Junior, we can also do this drop and with one device. We can, it can support open three layers and one background on the screen. So this is uh, the total topic about today. And if you have any questions, you can leave your questions in the chat, ro uh, chat room and later in the Q&A session, my colleague Stan will, will answer this question. And what's more, actually on our official website, we have uh, we have the online workshops. In the workshops, what you can get, you can get some new series videos. For example, for the soft uh, for the software operation videos we call it Nova Stock Course, you may find some information about how to do the smart setting for regular module and how we set the redundancy. You can have a uh, you can have a look about this op uh, software operation videos. And we also have the product solution series videos like the cloud-based platform solution and the stage render solution C1 and N9. So all these information you can check on our online workshops. So the link is like here. Go to our official website, novastar.tech, support and training, and then Novastar online workshops. Okay, so I think that's all for today's topic. And Next part will be the Q&A session, but we need to around one minute to prepare everything. So during this time, please kindly fill uh, out this feedback. See you later, bye-bye.